the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical Psychology for Today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from Reflections by Idris Shah. This audio has been made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. Shade Have you noticed how many people who walk in the shade curse the sun? Handcrafted A spiritually-minded lady more than once observed that I looked far too young to be a guru. Some years of dealing with her kind has solved that problem. Her objection now, I hear, is that I do not act like a guru. For one with such a mind, she seems slow to draw the obvious inference. People don't always get the gurus they deserve. They usually get the ones that they manufacture. And why shouldn't they? Nobody else would have them. Childhood Once upon a time there were some discontented children. Since their thinking capacity was not very adult, they decided that they would become happier if they changed their clothes. Some of them started to wear one kind of dress, others dressed up all differently. Then some thought that their boredom and anxiety was due to obeying certain rules, so they changed them. Finding that this was no good, some of them started to invent one set of rules after another and tried to observe them each time convincing themselves that this particular set of rules would do the trick. There was all kinds of variations on this. They tried team spirit, then they tried leaders, then they decided that leaders were the trouble, and so they decided all to be leaders to exercise this evil. That was not much more successful. Then they decided that certain inequalities were at the root of their difficulties, So they split into parties according to which set of inequalities was believed to be the most important. If they didn't like one set of rules, they inverted it and did the reverse, for they were practicing sympathetic magic like primitive people, though their name for it was rational analysis. They are still at it, and seem likely to continue in this way for some time to come, at least, that is, until someone calls them in off the playground for tea. Opinions Do not ask people how they arrived at their opinions if you want the truth. By asking them you will only be entering into a game. They will only tell you what they think is true, or what they think you want to hear. Study, rather, what they say and how they say it, what they do and what influences have played upon them in the past. This is how you will find out, if it is necessary for you, how they have arrived at their opinions. Defying Experience Every day man defies his everyday experiences. He seeks simple answers for simple questions. There is no simple answer to a simple question when the question was defective, like, what makes that car travel? The answer, petrol, is as true, untrue, and incomplete, and probably useless as the answer, the driver, the sparking plugs, the wheels, the transmission, and so on. But the questions still come. What am I? What are you doing? What should a person do? Waiting There are a lot of people who cannot stand the tension of waiting. These are the ones who have two alternatives, either to stand the tension of waiting or to be harmed by it. Golden Rule Do to others as you would have them do to you. Traditional philosophy has so deteriorated over the centuries that people have come to regard this trick statement as a piece of advice. It was originally intended to make people think. They were expected to react by asking why it should be a good policy, considering that most people want the wrong things for themselves. 
Shortcuts There are indeed shortcuts to higher knowledge. Those to whom the idea of a shortcut appeals are the least likely to be able to use them. This is because these tend to be the people in whom the factor of greed is so strong that it screens off the capacity to benefit from the shortcut. A straight line is not the shortest journey between two points, if that distant point is so screened that you may see it but not reach it. A man who arrives at the door of a house before anyone else may feel self-satisfied, not knowing that he has forgotten to bring the key. What the Culture Transmits It is the stupidity and shallowness of some of our forebears which punishes us, just as much as the endowment of the wiser ones offers us opportunities. The rejection by the stupid of valuable materials in the past caused an impairment in traditional expressions and terminology. When this happens, the culture becomes unable to communicate experiences, because it has no means of doing so, no patterns, and a mutilated language. Thought stabilizes itself lopsidedly, like an organism which is compensated for the loss of one of its parts. Colorblind people cannot see colors. Time, place, manner. Forget the fables of ritualized thought, so that you can remember. The right thing, said at the right time, in the right way, will almost never be the popular thing, at the popular time, in the conventionalized way. Much knowledge is ignored, discarded or opposed, because it is not apparently from an expected source, projected in a desired fashion, presented in a comfortable, or modishly uncomfortable, manner. Out of Context People often quote things out of their original setting or context. Context in English means woven together. Much wool is found woven together with cotton, but the coexistence of wool and cotton does not necessarily illuminate the meaning of either. It is undesirable to quote anything out of its right setting or context. It is equally undesirable, though very common, for things to be studied in an old context which was, from the first, unsuitable for them. Tolerance Tolerance and trying to understand others, until recently a luxury, has today become a necessity. This is because, unless we can realise that we and others are generally behaving as we do because of inculcated biases over which we have no control while we imagine that they are our own opinions, we might do something which would bring about the destruction of all of us. And then we will not have any time at all to learn whether tolerance is a good or bad thing. Shins and Arms Why does a dog sink its teeth into your shin and not into your arm? Because, as an observer can see, the shin is within his reach, the arm is not. This, however, would not prevent the dog from imagining that the shin is a more vital part than the arm. No opinion is more tenaciously held than one in the mind of a person who has no real option to hold any other. Yet opinions are generally substitutes for what opinions purport to be. Have a care. If a Manx cat tells you that it is trying to preserve its long, beautiful tail, you don't have to believe it, especially if you have eyes. Certainty What can you do with a person who says that he is absolutely uncertain about everything and that he is absolutely certain about that? Opportunity People forget that when an opportunity is accepted, it is not what they may think it is. A man recognises and accepts an opportunity in accordance with the degree of man he is, and whether it is a corresponding opportunity. Ends You are adrift while you still think that a means is an end. Society You say that this society will come to an end, because societies always have done so. 
I wonder whether they have ended because they were not really societies at all. Fame and Effort Effort makes some great men famous. Even greater effort enables other great men to remain unknown. Prejudice People cannot handle prejudice because they try to deal with the symptom. Prejudice is the symptom. Wrong assumptions are the cause. Prejudice is the daughter of assumption. Dropout We hear a lot about dropouts, so much in fact that the people who talk about them have effectively attained their objective, to prevent us having the time to ask what it was that such people were ever in. Straws and Camels Talking about straws and camels' backs is just one way of approaching things. If you have enough camels, no backs need be broken. Optimist and Pessimist Sometimes a pessimist is only an optimist with extra information. Talent Talent is the presence of ability and absence of understanding about the source and operation of knowledge. Unrecorded History A philosopher of ancient times, after he had been dead for centuries, accidentally discovered that his teachings were being misrepresented by his living successors. Because he was still a dedicated and sincere individual, he managed to transport himself back to ordinary life for a limited space of time. When he eventually reached the earth of the humans, however, most of the people could not believe that it was him at all. But when he had convinced some people that he really had returned, some said, Your being able to come back here is far more interesting than your ideas. Don't you see that? So he made no progress with them, and had considerable difficulty in escaping their attentions. The people who realised that he really was himself said, Did you not understand that the most important thing is not what you said or did, but what we believe you said or did? You, after all, are a transient here. We are continuous. Did you? Did you ever hear of the man who heard of a certain buried treasure? It was in a country where a foreign language was spoken. It was to be given to someone who exactly answered his description. A friendly and well-intentioned man offered to teach him the Chinese language before he set off. He had spent so much time in learning the language that he thought he'd better invest in a horse to get him to the horde before he was too old to enjoy it. When he got there, however, he found that Chinese was not the language spoken in that country and when he did find the spot and could communicate with the people about the treasure, they said, You can certainly have the treasure, but for one small point upon which you have unfortunately not informed yourself. The man who buried it specifically excluded from its future possession anyone who rides a horse. The First Ape and the Bananas there was once an ape who discovered, in conversation, that there were such things as bananas. This information stimulated his innate affinity for bananas. For years he dreamt of the day when he would eat one. In the fullness of time, a bunch of bananas came his way. Eating them was a sublime experience, as marvellous as he had imagined that it would be. But from that day on he was unhappy. He decided that he would never again have the chance of such a stimulus, anticipation and fulfilment as now lay behind him. Because of this belief, the ape became impossible to live with. Eventually, he lay down and died. The Second Ape and the Bananas There was an ape who wanted a banana more than he wanted anything else. When he eventually got one, its taste fulfilled his highest expectations. 
Next time he was offered one, however, it did not seem to taste at all good. In fact, his original experience of banana eating had been compounded of nine tenths anticipation and one tenth banana. When he tasted the banana this time, therefore, he spat it out, saying, Oh, that is not what I call a banana. Someone is evidently trying to deceive me. He passed most of the rest of his life trying to find the right kind of banana. Ultimately, he decided that his first banana had been unique, so he gave up the search. This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idris Shah Foundation.